Hello, um, from today we are going to start chapter 5 of the textbook. So it's a uh, chapter 5 is a continuation of chapter 4. Uh, it continues to uh, study the regression with a single regressor. But this chapter is uh, concerned with more uh, technical issues like hypothesis testing and confidence intervals. So let's have a look at the, the outline. So we are going to discuss uh, how the standard error is calculated, but we are not going to go into the details. It involves a lot of uh, mathematical derivations. But we are going to skip most of them. And then we will study hypothesis test and confidence interval. They are pretty much the same. And, uh, and we, uh, I believe that you learned the basics of hypothesis test and confidence interval from ECO 320 from the prerequisite. So we will uh, have a brief touch on those. And number four, five, six are uh, like additional topics related to closely related to the previous ones, but they are useful uh, topics. So uh, let's see what how it how it goes. Okay, here is a brief review of what we have done in chapter four. In chapter four, we start with introducing a regression equation or regression line. What is a regression model? So it was simple. Uh, we just want to explain uh, an outcome variable or the test score in our uh, running example. So the test score, we would like to explain the test score using the t student teacher ratio using a regressor. So, and to make everything simple, we assume that there is a linear relationship. So uh, every, every, every unit increase in the regressor implies the constant same uh, increment in the outcome. So that's, that's, uh, that's the main, uh, main parameter of our interest. So we, and then we learned how to, how we can estimate the regression slope, regression parameters. And the idea was the least squares estimator. We, we defined, we defined how to measure the, the size, the amount of the prediction error in your estimator first, and then based on the measure of the, uh, the, the size of the error, we would like to minimize that. The measure was defined based on uh, the squared errors. We square errors because that will make everything easy, nice, and uh, it, it implies a lot of desirable properties. So uh, it's the most commonly used estimator in statistics and economics and any social sciences. And, and then we have to study how it uh, behaves, how it performs, and we, would, we need to uh, derive its sampling distribution. And we learned some basic assumptions required to derive the sampling distribution first. So the assumptions are uh, conditional mean zero assumption, IID assumption, and the outlier assumption. The outlier should be rare. Uh, and then we derive the sampling distribution based on the law of large number and uh, the central limit theorem. So you, uh, you do not need to memorize the formula, but you need to understand how it works and the main idea, like the mean is consistent, but the variance, uh, variance decreases uh, at the order of, at the rate of one over n. So as the sample size increases, the variance goes to zero. And then based on the sampling distribution, we could calculate uh, the standard error, uh, or we we also defined R squared, another measure that uh, that captures how well your regression model is explaining the outcome is outcome variable by the R squared. So that's what we have done. And today we are going to uh, study a hypothesis test and confidence intervals. Let's. Let's uh, start, start from the very beginning. Uh, we have regression equation like this, as usual, and our main 
interest is on is in beta one. So beta one is the amount y increases when x increases by one unit, right? It's the slope of the regression line, and we of course it is unknown. Uh, so we need to estimate beta one from the data, and uh, we have the OLS estimator denoted as beta one head. It has head on top of beta. So beta one head is a number you can calculate from the data, and this is the the number you can get from Stata. So your software will calculate this for you. So the formula is not that difficult, but you don't need to uh, memorize the formula. So so far at this point, up to this point, you can observe the data and you can calculate the estimator, but from the same uh, to understand the sampling distribution it is not observed from the data it's uh, this hypothetical uh, uh, distribution so what it assumes is remember sampling distribution is coming from the repetition of sampling so sampling means when you have one data then if you need to sample repeat the sampling again you have to throw away the data and resample recollect the data again, which is impossible in practice. But if we can do it uh, in mind and mathematically we could do it, and then we, we using the using the central limit theorem we could derive uh, where the sampling distribution converges in the limit if you could repeat the sampling for an infinite number of times. To do that, we need uh, assumptions like this. Conditional mean zero assumption, and IID assumption, and outliers assumption about outliers. So outliers, not too many outliers assumption. So under these key assumptions, you can have a sampling distribution like this. So approximately, your estimator beta hat is approximately a normal distribution. So beta hat is approximately a normal distribution with the mean equals to the true parameter beta 1 and variance is complicated uh, but the point here is denominator has the sample size n so mean does not have n in here so as n increases the mean does not change it is always centered around the correct parameter however the mean the variance is uh, inversely proportional to the sample size, which means the center, the mean is the same, but the variance will uh, shrink uh, to zero in the limit. So in the end, your sampling distribution will be a perfect, just a one point in the end, if the variance is literally zero. So that's the meaning of the sampling distribution. And then, um, then from, we are going to use this normal distribution approximation so everything will be approximated to a normal distribution and based on this normal distribution we would like to uh, do hypothesis testing and we are going to calculate the standard error doing these two these two are closely related and um, well, i am going to explain hypothesis testing in the next video so see, see you in there bye